I'm Brent Leary. I'm Paul Greenberg. Do you ever get tired of saying that? If I did, I'd forget my name. <laughs> <laughs> I and, on, and on that note, uh, yeah, we're the serum players. We're now, I, now I literally forgot my name. <laughs> You're Paul Pedrazzi. No, that's... <laughs> Pedrazzi. That's right. No, he's Paul Pedrazzi. <laughs> I'm Paul Pedrazzi. <laughs> yeah. Very fancy. That's right. Yeah, I'm just Brent Leary. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we're still kicking it at Dreamforce 2019. Although, we kind of have a different little background here. We're, we're like chilling we're, in Lake Tahoe. Yeah, it's relaxing. No, yeah. this is actually, we're, we're really at Lake Tahoe. We just don't want Salesforce to know oh, we left. That it. We left. <laughs> right? Because they are our hosts, right? Well, I'm waiting for you to go off of that cliff right there. Try doing a little dive. Yeah, you given that I, I can tell you the result immediately, <laughs> I will drown. <laughs> right, so I don't think I'll be doing All that. right, we'll just stay kind of nice and cool and calm here by the water side <laughs> with Paul Pedrazzi. There we go. Thanks for having Hey, appreciate you guys having me. Absolutely. Hey, yeah. SVP of product for one of my favorite segments of Salesforce, Essentials for the, for the SMB folks. Yeah, for so the wait, so he's SVP of your company? No, I'm CRM, I'm essentials. CRM <laughs> essentials. They're just essential. Salesforce <laughs> oh. essentials. Yeah. That's oh, now I get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us, man. Oh, thank you. I, I gave you the heads up on the hug, so let me ask Paul Greenberg, did he give you a good first yeah, hug? Yeah, actually, he One didn't. Time? No, the key is you <laughs> didn't do the pad. Oh, okay. the key, <laughs> You got to realize, the, the absolute killer of hugs is when you pat someone at the end of it, because oh. that immediately is distancing you from the hug you just gave, right? And that's the science of it. Uh, look, I'm quoted in the Huffington Post on this. On hugs? Yes. On, you know, <laughs> it's kind of a niche. Yeah. But you know who wrote the article? No. Vala. Uh, I'll agree. Right. <laughs> And it actually, they decided to call it the Huggington Post. Just That's that. right. Thank you. I love it. There you go. So what you did, see, it's very important because a lot of people, they'll give you a hug and then they'll go. Okay. Almost everybody does that. You did not do that. You Man. gave a straight. What does that mean? I, like, I know. What does that say? They're saying? ready to get rid of you or something? It or? basically says, I gave you a hug, but I don't really mean it. But not really. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. A, it's an insecurity thing, no. though. No. He, well, he warned me. And once Brent said, I was, I'm all in. <laughs> no, I know. My kind of guy yeah. got a great first name. You got <laughs> so much going. And I found out we have just approximately the same last name. You're, I'm Pedrazzi. Very, very <laughs> similar. You're, you're Pat Greenberg. Right. <laughs> very very oh, that's similar. That's right, Greenberg. I'm sorry. I forgot <laughs> once you told Already. me. Already. Right. All right, so I got two Pauls. They're both good huggers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to leave and let you <laughs> have our moment together. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's, hey, but now I met you, I think the first time I met you was back at Trailhead. X DX yeah that is the first time you're right absolutely so tell folks you know what you actually we gave you the title but tell them what you actually do so uh, you you may or may not be familiar with essentials essentials is really the easiest way to get started with Salesforce it's it's purpose built for a small company okay so and you know you could, you could wonder like well what does that mean small company purpose built uh, really what that means and what we've learned and we've been, you know, we started out, I think, doing a great job with small business and, you know, continued to grow, got larger customers and, and focused on that. Um, and I think in some ways we've kind of forgotten a bit about the little guy. And so Essentials is all about getting back to that, getting back to the roots, delivering for the small company. And that's really about things like um, knowing they don't have an admin, right? Just not having an admin that's there to set it up, to train your team. It forces you to think completely differently about the product, even on things like support. For us, support is baked in. You can, in the product, chat with someone, get your questions answered. You don't have to go somewhere else. So we just rethink things uh, in terms of business model, in terms of pricing, everything for the small business. And, and my role is really on the product side. So really it's the question of what are we going to build is uh, probably the, the most obvious question that I think about all the time. How do you even think about it? So look, I mean, I. I <laughs> Uh, I, you know, Brent is like the guy on small business, and I've obviously been part of it over all these years, 20 years plus in CRM, and every single, especially when you're in small business and kind of not all that evolved yet, mm -hmm. basically it's kind of, you're almost dealing with individual taste, right, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to institutionalized, you know, process. So mm -hmm. given you're dealing with individual taste, and every little small businessman has a different idea of how they've been running their business and want to run their business and they're starting to grow and they don't really understand what happens when they're say going from small to the lower end of mid uh, or something like that. 
How do you even think about what you're going to put in a product like that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I would say like one of the biggest mistakes I see product teams make is thinking they have the answer to that. You know, and the reason is because you know we all have our own biases and we live with them, and it's hard to separate. Um, for us, it means talking to a lot of customers, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, and every time you go out, you learn, and you start, you do start to see some of those patterns. And I'll tell you, the, the most obvious ones are almost anti-patterns. Okay. Uh, anti-pattern would be something <coughs> like assuming they know what CRM actually is, <laughs> right? And a lot of times you walk in there, and, and they're like, well, we we had no idea that it was this, or we thought it was something else, and um, and also I'd say the second thing that we kind of run into a lot is we don't think about a feature set in the sense of what is the competition doing and how do we actually kind of either copy that or get ahead of that. I don't think about competition in that way at all. Mm -hmm. I think about a spreadsheet as really our competition yeah. in this world. And, wow. yep. and that's what we, start, we see when you go talk to a customer, they're starting there and then they need to look at what we're offering. And that's kind of the first litmus right. test and say, that's way better than us. I can see how that's way better. And if you can't answer that question, they just will back up. And we were talking earlier about it where someone who's in a spreadsheet, let's say they have all their contacts there, and they now want to start tracking, let's say, let's say you're a real estate agent and you want to track the spouse of someone who, who you sold a house to. So you want to add spouse as a column. Pretty mm. easy to do in a spreadsheet. Sure. Add a column, type in spouse, and you're off to the races. In a CRM, you mm. got to know what a custom field is, you got to know how to go do. And that's where our job is to make them not have to know that stuff. Mm. And so a lot of it, quite honestly, is customer conversation and being really open about um, kind of that we may not have it right. You know, we've been at this a long time. We have been successful as a company. Does not mean at all that we've nailed it. So small businesses have been using CRM for a long time, but what's the most surprising thing in 2019 today that you hear from customers about CRM, small business customers? Yeah, about CRM? Yeah. Wow. What, what do I hear most? And, you know, I would say that um, probably the... No, by the way, nothing is a perfectly appropriate answer. No, well, <laughs> we, we, talk to a, we do talk to a lot of customers. Um, I think, I don't know that it's surprising, but I think it's something that we hear a lot about, which is, if you think about kind of, so take the buzzword of machine learning and AI, and we've, we obviously have a big push in that. We do a, a ton of great work with Einstein, right. and, and it's really a powerful tool. Um, I think the surprising thing was I would have expected small businesses to um, to not really be interested in that in right. a way, mm, you know. Sure. And but when you when you put it in front of them in a way like if you walk up and said, "Do you want machine learning?" <laughs> you know that doesn't work, right. right? But but if it's as simple as you know a toggle that they can throw on something, and mm. now they get a score, or maybe they get a health on a relationship, and they go, "Oh, that's cool." And then you could say, "Well, behind the scenes, there's." There's all this data model and magic and machine learning and algorithms. That's fine, but it's, it's, if you surface it in the right way, they will actively want to use that and find power in it. Yeah. I think that was a little surprising to me. I thought they would be pushing that off more than they are, and it's, it's more about us making it approachable to them, I find. How do you make it easy? Uh, mm -hmm. The That's AI or just generally no, speaking? No, the AI, actually. How do you make that easy for them? Yeah, it I, pretty much has to be. It has yeah. to be. It ha you know, I, I take... Um, a lot of our, I guess, um, kind of uh, inspiration is from consumer products that have done really well. And the reason for that is that in our market, our buyer and the user are the same person. Mm -hmm. And they act emotionally and they act uh, like they're not doing a full RFP. Right. Right? They're going to do a problem. They're not? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, they're going to go, hey, you know what? I've, um, I'm getting overwhelmed in my email. Right. I've got this info at address and I'm getting a ton of stuff and I know things are falling through the cracks. And they go and search on, you know, support email system. And then w the first thing they find is they look at two or three and they're done. Mm. And they'll pick one and they'll run with it. So they operate much more like a consumer and they, they go into these systems and it's a very emotional thing. It's, um, the, the analog for me is with like an app store. You'll go download an app, it'll show up on your phone, you'll decide in five seconds, maybe even three seconds, if you want that at all. Right? Does it, and a lot of it is just aesthetic. Does it look clean? Does it look well designed? Does it crash immediately? And if it does, you hold down your finger and you hit the X. And it's of gone. course, the one difference is an app costs a dollar ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. right. You don't. <laughs> yes. Although Essentials is is an Cheap. affordable product. Cheap. Yeah. It's, um, and Any so, sense. yes, definitely. And so so, but at the same time, it doesn't matter if 
Like, I don't care if it was free. If someone walks in and they emotionally go, ah, oh, this is too right. much for me. Right. It doesn't matter if it's free. So we're not really in, in, like, we don't think about it that way. We think about, to your point of simplicity, a lot of it comes down to emotion. Does it feel simple? Does it feel Nobody. approachable? Do they, do they feel confident that it's, that it's right for me? Yeah. And so we, we spend a lot of time on that. So a lot of small businesses, and I even talked to one today, one of the customers, I'm not going to say who it is, but I talked to a woman, and the perception is, well, you know, I really thought Salesforce is, they kind of moved upstream. They're not really focused on you know, companies like me. Uh, but when I actually talk to them, I, I, I got a whole different vibe from it. Yeah. How do you get that out there to more small businesses? Because there are still a lot of them out there that think, you know, that, that shit, all the AI stuff, and I, it's just, it's got to be for the bigger companies. Yeah, yeah, too much for me. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times you'll hear that where they'll say, too much for me, I guess one day I'll get to it. Which, right. you know, and maybe they will, maybe they won't, but for, for us, like, we want people to, to kind of fall in love with it. And I think the analog for me goes back to, to say, well, how do you get people to, to kind of understand that we actually care about small business and right. we're invested in right. it? And we have an entire, by the way, we have an entire coaching team that is their dedicated staffing. So when you're in the product, if you're, let's say you have an issue uploading your data, we'll literally get someone on the phone for as long as it takes to help you get up and running because we know how critical it is and how you don't have an IT department and we just we just empathize. So that is going on. That's been a, a focus change, a thoughtful approach that I think has been working, which is great. How people find out, I think, is the in this market is the same way we find out about, you know, the next Netflix special to watch. You know, a podcast like the CRM players. Like how do you find out? You guys aren't running Facebook ads. <laughs> you know, like it's someone says, oh, you know what, you got you to gotta listen to that. They're really covering some good topics or they have an interesting guest. And then I go and I add it and I listen. I think this is the same. Like this is mm -hmm. going to be two general contractors having coffee in the morning and they go, oh, well, you don't, you don't use essentials. Here's what, check out what I do. And if we can get that happening one to one, I think we'll have something. And that's, and that's on us to get that going. So on that, there's two or three things. There's, there's a, the awareness part, meaning that contractor has to, the one who's saying, oh, you look and see, he has to know it exists to begin with yeah. before he can say that. And he probably has to be using it before he can actually say that, yeah. although that doesn't stop people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, so, and then the second thing is um, people have to be able to find you easily, meaning you, uh, meaning essentials in the Salesforce universe. Yes. And, and thirdly, there are a number of Salesforce customers, and I've talked to multiple ones, who are effectively oversubscribed to Salesforce, meaning they're actually small business customers, but they've got the regular one, yeah. and they don't know there's a process to say, okay, well, you can change over. Yeah. So, and that's a big deal, actually. I'm finding that more and more people, because, you know, look, the, the broad perception of Salesforce, the bigger yeah. company, is, is expensive, right? Mm -hmm. People say that all the time. You're not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I can point to, I don't know, let's say five or six off the top of my head, small, small businesses who are using Salesforce. I'm related to one of them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> who are using Salesforce that realized, oh, wait a minute, this is far too much for what we want. Because, you know, maybe a zealous salesperson or something like that. Who knows? But whatever reason, they, they didn't understand that the essentials even existed. And maybe it didn't when they first maybe, yeah. started. And they're looking for a way to stay with sales, which they like it, right. but have something a little more appropriate to them. And and right now, it's not it's not an obvious thing that you can do. Yeah. So you've got three things: you've got awareness generally, you've got the ability to convert, you know, to in effect down convert, sure. you know, and to the, the more appropriate side. And then you've got um, I'll call it once awareness is there and forget conversion from there, but once awareness is there, where do I actually go to find it? What do I do? And at the end of the show, you should actually tell us where you go, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> right, so, but those, how, do you, how do you plan for all of that? Yeah, no, it's, and it's a big challenge. It's, it's a multifactorial problem. Um, let's take a few pieces of it. So on the awareness side, the, the actually the great news about Salesforce is everyone knows about Salesforce, right. everyone knows it's a CRM. Right. They, they also have the perceptions you rightly bring right. up, right? It's, it's made for bigger companies, it's expensive. So we have to deal with that, but at least we're not like a, some startup right. that now has to go educate the market that they exist. 
Yeah. So I, f I find that on balance, I would prefer that problem. Sure. Um, and so I think that's, we start there and, and actually you see it. We actually, when people come to our site um, and they try the product, the conversion's really good. Like we actually get really good numbers sure. there. Um, and so that, I think all of that is a nice tailwind for us. Um, on the essential side now, figuring out essentials exist inside the machine right. is a hard problem. Yeah. We did our own website for a little while, Salesforce Essentials website. We've now folded that back, but we're doing a lot around kind of internal SEO. We're doing, of course, we do um, Google Ads and all those kind of things. So we're doing, I would say, like paid. We're doing organic. We've got a, a stronger footprint now um, with a lot more content, actually. For, if, for example, if you go, so you can go on Google, search Salesforce Essentials, you'll get to the page. You can go on salesforce.com, search on Essentials, you'll find the page. And what you'll find that's unique is the language is not what you would expect from Salesforce. So in fact, literally our homepage message is uh, something to the effect of, you know, get off of spreadsheets. Hmm. Right? Which you would never see no. if you went to any other <laughs> part of right. Salesforce. No. So what I love about that is a small business walks in and they start to now feel like, oh, this could be for me because I am on a spreadsheet. Right. Um, so we've made a lot of changes in that front just in terms of messaging and location of where the page is on the site, how people sign up, trials, all of that has been changed. It's not a solved problem, right. um, for sure. The, the other piece I'll bring up that we haven't talked about is this idea of expansion. Okay. So one of the things we want to do is, is right now we have this is a little bit of kind of inside baseball on CRM, right? But you, you can start with essentials. Inside baseball on CRM, yeah. that's actually, we need to do that yeah. in a second. <laughs> that's yeah. a, yeah, we'll do that in detail. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Well, um, we, we, we've actually done a number of segments on inside CRM and baseball. Uh, okay. Yeah, but we've but done this a is a new one. I'm right. flipping it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll have someone who comes in and when they want some more capabilities, they might start with essentials and say, we want API access. Mm -hmm. And to do that, they would have to move to another edition. And they can do that, and people do it every day, but we don't want them to have to. We would rather have a model where they could just throw a switch and have API access, mm -hmm. or throw a switch and have some additional capability. Much more like, again, like consumers, like everything we right. use in our life. So that, for us, kind of making a very smooth transition, and of course, Essentials is built on the same platform, so it's not like you move up and everything goes away. It's, it's actually a seamless upgrade, which is nice. But that is another big focus, I'd say. So apart from, website and branding and how we talk about it and paid search ads and organic all of that i would say is that expansion when you talk about moving kind of between as people grow we just want to make that really easy so when you do that when you do the switch throw mm -hmm. uh are you doing it from the standpoint high essentials cost this and you get all this you don't have to use all this but you can use two-thirds of it or one-fifth of it and then when you need something, you just flow sw switch and it's not gonna change your price? Or are you saying there's a basic essentials, cost you this, you wanna fl flip a switch, it'll cost you a little more, but how are you, what's the price? So, so there, are, there are capabilities in the product you can turn on and off. Right. So you can throw the switch and it's the same price you pay, which is the $30 a month. Okay. Um, so that's fine. There are some things that are what we call add-ons. Okay. So that you would then, it, when you throw that switch and you can <coughs> charge. So I'll give an example. We have a feature called Dialer in the product. So if you want a phone number for your business, you can now do that and then within the product you can receive phone calls and you can make phone calls. And we just charge for the minutes. So we actually don't charge for the feature. It's, it's actually super. Actually charge for the minutes? We charge for the minutes. We have that consumption base. And oh, so as you God. start going, That's uh, a new one. you can use it. So it's, yeah. and it's just like you would pay for you know, a data plan on your cell phone. Right. It's a very familiar, it's like here's what you get and we, we again, the, it's very reasonable. If you looked at it compared to buying minutes anywhere else, it's very reasonable. Mm. Wow, it's um, like it's almost like a payphone. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you make it sound your, your so time advanced. is up. <laughs> <laughs> your time is up. In another quarter. <laughs> Put it in the machine. Right. <laughs> right, in the machine learning. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna flip it a little bit because we we talked pre a little before we started doing this, and you said something. You know, Essentials is operating as its own business unit, right? Correct. But you said that the Salesforce proper is looking towards essentials for mm. some things to, Absolutely. to, to kind really. of bake in to the big you know, overall. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that, I'm glad you brought that up because we are our own business unit and that means, you know, it's, it's actually, you know, people will say like, oh, well, I work a startup in a big company and usually <laughs> I kind of roll my eyes at that and yeah, I'm sure a lot amen. of people <laughs> do the same, <laughs> right? Because right? yeah. there is, you know, being a startup is a very different thing. But right. some right. of the 
benefits we get. We're all. You had a great first name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, and then, you know, yeah, startups are very different. But we are all on one floor, and we are not siloed in the sense of marketing sits there, customer success, sales, product, engineering. We literally you just walk around the floor, and we're all right there. Yeah. And that does a lot. Like yeah. you know, we all will get together for lunch in the break room. We have all hands. We're all packed in there, so we get a lot of those benefits and. And it does help us. So when a customer has a problem, literally it's a swivel chair over to the product team on, hey, did you guys know that this isn't working? It's like, hold, hold let me go take a look. So that dynamic is, I think, really special and not super common inside of a company like Salesforce. So it's a big deal. Um, but the point you're bringing up, Brent, is a good one. And I think it speaks to the, uh, the executive support that we have. So that's another kind of question. It's like, well, how real is this essentials thing? You guys have, you did contact manager. I remember you did that a while oh, ago. Yeah. You know. You can get some of that, and I, I think we are in a very different world with essentials, not only because of the business unit, but executive support. And so I'll, let me talk about that for a second. One of the things that we are being, we're not only look to, to kind of have a real business that's helping small business that's, that's financially successful, just purely on the metrics. Yes, we have to do that. But almost more importantly is every one of our customers wants simplicity, and it's hard to deliver. Um, and so our group is being looked at, and one of the terms being thrown around is like the, the UI R&D for the company. Hmm. Um, go and figure out what kind of the, the true simplicity can be. Push the envelope. We know it won't be able to, we won't be able to pick it up and now give it to you know, our largest customers. That won't happen, but there will be lessons learned in there and things we'll figure out that will definitely carry forward. And being able to explore in this space where simplicity is the number one thing is, uh, is, is important to our executive team. And so they're looking to us to figure this out. And, and yeah, it's gonna, we're gonna have some even internal friction about it. Like, why are you making it that way? Why are you changing it? But the, the idea is if we get it right, it will flow up to all of our customers. And that's, that's a big part of, it's not like a, a metric we're evaluated on. But it is in the air and in the ethos, and when we have meetings with the executive team, they ask about it. Who's using this? Who, who else do you talk to in sales cloud and service cloud? Are you working with them on if they can take this piece up there? That is a, a real conversation and a big part of the value. So let me throw another word into simplicity, which is, and this goes for enterprise customers too, really, but I, I've um, maintained for a while that nobody really, nobody really should start thinking about delighting the customer all the time because that's <laughs> an idiotic concept okay. for it's not going to happen yeah first of all it's literally impossible and because the minute it's anyone expects delight it's not delight it's expectation yeah and it shifts then you actually have to go higher up on the again. chain up mm -hmm. and you go broke yeah uh on the other hand there is one thing that every customer in the world wants and that's convenience mm. make it easy on them to do whatever it is they do now simplicity is part of it it's not all of it uh convenience also means you know, um, the, the, let's sort of the tweetable phrase I use all the time is keeping the ordinary ordinary. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if I, te and this for small businesses, double, okay. right? If I text you, if I, if I email you and say, I need your address texted to me, please, you don't hit reply and give them the email. Yeah. Mm. You text it, yeah. right? And that's, uh, meaning you're not only looking at what they want, you're looking at how they, are asking you to communicate it right. and it has to happen and you mess that up it's way worse than messing up something else you yeah. look you can not be delightful and be and your customer will be perfectly happy with you yeah. but you mess up the ordinary stuff they're expecting of you and you're dead yep. yeah. now that goes to where convenience comes in convenience also says look I understand as a as a customer honestly I don't have. I don't want to love you as the same way I love my spouse, for God's sake. <laughs> or the Yankees. Right? You're a company, for God's sake. Or the Yankees, right? In my case, uh, uh, you're a company, for God's sake. Right? What I want is I have this thing I want to do with you, yeah. and I want to do it, and I want to make it easy on me, and I want to be done with it. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And that's how you communicate with every company in the world. I don't care how much. Look, all your, even your advocates, right? Yeah. The, the Salesforce is the only enterprise software company I've ever seen with fanboys and girls, right? Yeah. But, uh, and literally the only one. It is an amazing yeah, No, it's a phenomenon. Yeah. At the same time, you know what? They still want it to be easy on them. They still want it to be convenient. They're not sitting there saying, my entire life is Salesforce. They're yeah. saying, I really love the company because I feel more involved than just an ordinary company. I feel like it's part of something else. 
but that something else has to have definition and be easy for them to participate in and something that they can do without destroying the rest of their life. Otherwise, they're not talking to you anymore. <laughs> so the question is not just simplicity, but convenience for small business. And convenience for small business is even more, I need to be able to do this fast because you know what? My kid's screaming down, down out mm. over there and I gotta go take care of them. Yeah. So how do you deal with, I'm putting aside simplicity here, yeah. how do you deal with convenience? convenience. Yeah. Um, I love this because this is like the essence of product management, right? Is, is these kind of questions around emotion, around convenience, yes. around how are people like, what is this slipstream they're really operating in versus the one you want them to right. operate in? Amen there. Your, your text question. Um, so let's take a few examples because your first premise I think is exactly right, which is, this idea of basic needs have to be met before you can even think about the light. Yes. If you if you have like um, you know a restaurant where the food is no good, it's like you're well, you're not ready to start talking about the light. Like the food has to be cooked well and served warm, and the wait staff has to be nice, and the maitre d shouldn't be smoking. Like all these things. <laughs> like you, until you get that right, don't worry about the light. Um, and and so like that's that's certainly true. And then the question is like, well, how do you make something that is um, I think oftentimes about like surprising. Something's like, wow, that really worked. That was really easy. Like I, and and that's a good signal for us. So a couple examples. I think you can do that in one way where um, you certainly give someone a superpower. That's one way I think, which is like, how can you take someone who's managing their contacts in a spreadsheet and now give them a superpower? Like, and if you can do that, Instagram did that, and they did that mm -hmm. where all of a sudden we were great photographers. Like it was like in a moment. Now you take it, it's like, wow, these filters, and then you're putting up, like, oh my God, like, I never thought I could, I am an artist. You know, and people felt like an artist. Okay, I want to throw a curve at that. Now. Okay, go for it. So let's. Not an let's, Instagram fan, apparently. No, I like Instagram, <laughs> it's not that, but I'm actually going to take a YouTube example and throw it at you. Okay. So when YouTube was first created, yeah. everyone was uploading videos on YouTube, didn't, and everyone was like, whoa, I'm uploading videos on YouTube. I'm now a videographer, I'm also a movie star and <laughs> all of this, and they were really crappy quality, yeah, but nobody sure. cared. Yeah. Now, if you don't have amazing production values, no one's going to look at you at all. And that becomes because we grew up with TV and movies, yeah. and eventually those things take hold. Yeah. You yeah. said emotion, yeah. and you're right, yeah. because it's also, it's not just immediate emotional impact, but it's the it's re re memory of childhood and all oh, the things yeah. that you depended on to make your experience with that movie real to you as yeah. a kid. So now you upload a crappy video on YouTube and I'm saying, wow, I'm videographer. Everyone's saying, get that thing off YouTube. Yeah. Absolutely. So, well, but we know we, that for sure because that's why we have a camera crew now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're behind the camera. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. They're actually yeah. there. See that robot? <laughs> right that robot? There they are. That's <laughs> our the remote camera camera. right there. Right. right. So oh, yeah. that's what I'm talking about dealing. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's true. It makes me an artist, yeah. but then you have to actually produce art, right? So mm, yeah. how do you yeah. how do yeah. you do that? How do yeah. you deal with that? So there's there's definitely this this gets to your earlier comment, which is that bar continues to go up. Mm. So there's a model called the Kano model, which you may or may not be familiar with. It's it's a very cool model about basic expectations and delight, and it maps it all out. But the idea is, which is it, it just keeps ratcheting, right? So when you when you could first do a video. And, and that was like the thing. It didn't matter, right? Like it was just amazing that you could get that online yes. and someone else could see it. No, no longer amazing anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah but please it, get that all the right. <laughs> so like, oh, we're so tired of that. Right. Again. Right. You know, and everything is that way. And so I think you always have to be aware of that curve and, and help people um, on kind of that moving upwards. There's also the convenience side, right? Which mm -hmm. is like particularly in small business because you don't have the admin, you don't have someone's gonna train you. You don't have someone who's going to be tinkering with the system. Right, right. You're doing your day job. You don't want to be IT at night. Right. Right. And that, that we really feel that. And so we're trying to do as much as we can to help someone get data in the system where they don't even have to take a spreadsheet. I mean, they shouldn't have to take a CSV and even know right. what a CSV is <laughs> and then know what our formatting model is that fits our data model. Like, we, do we have that? Sure. Can someone do that? Yes. But is that really how it should be? Of course not. Right. It should be a lot simpler. So that's where we have things like, um, our plugin for Outlook and Gmail, where literally you get that email, you it's got a button, add to contact, boom, and now it's in. That's the convenience yes. side. So we have to, that will never be done. Um, there, you can see companies that have done amazing jobs. That probably my favorite example recently is like Lyft or Uber, mm. where you know when they're I don't know how long they've been around, but let's say ten years ago. Ten years ago, none of us were really bothered by standing on a curb and finding a cab. 
Like we thought that was fine. We're like, what's the big deal? It's, it's what? Were you going to complain about that? They're going to be in it for a couple of minutes. Yeah, or whatever. They're going to come by, and then no one really cared that when you got to your destination, that everyone got out of the cab, and you were sitting there trying to pay for the next five minutes while <laughs> everyone's inside at the club. <laughs> right. Like that—that that was eleven. <laughs> no one thought about it, but they came in and said, "We're going to take that step away. We're going to take that step away. Yep. Convenience." Yep. And they have an, a huge business. Yeah. Exactly right. So we think we think a lot about that. I'm not saying we've cracked that code, but we do think about it the okay, same way. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Now. Yeah. This has been a great conversation. You know, there's two Pauls here. <laughs> they like hugging. Um, yeah, but they have the same last name almost. <laughs> almost, yes. almost. But <laughs> there's a couple of questions we have to wrap it up with that will determine if anybody actually even sees this. Oh, man, it's a lot yeah. of pressure. Yeah, yeah, this, this, is, is, this is a lot yeah, of pressure. Yeah. So, um, are you a football fan? Uh, I am, well, I'm a Niner fan this year. Does that count? <laughs> you kind of jumped the gun, right? and, but you know, and I am a Rams okay, fan. Okay. So traditionally, I really don't like you, but that's okay. <laughs> but because you said you are a Niners fan and not a Patriots fan, okay. you, oh yeah, no right. oh. yeah, no, no, All right. no. Oh, that's like a no-no. I hate the Patriots. I, I don't hate them. Even they've had a lot of success. You know, I do like the underdogs. I, I, I do like the fact that I got a little feeling of hate. <laughs> I did too. I picked that right up. up. You said, you're no, a hover, no. so you know. You're <laughs> really emotional. I, I'm yeah. totally right brain. <laughs> so, uh, so because there was actual a feeling of hate right. in, in there, there. Right in there. Just a tiny. tiny. Just enough. Let's say it's, it's enough. Okay. <laughs> call it a strong, a strong but undeclared animus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and because we love that small declaration of animus. Right. Yeah. Welcome, and we will oh, be showing. You. Man, that is that congratulations. Is Thank you. I, I feel I'm honored. honored. I'm honored. So just to <laughs> let people know where they can go and learn more about essentials, where can they do that? So I would go to Salesforce.com and search on essentials. You can of course do a Google search, or we actually have a Twitter account for at essentials. So if you're on Twitter. Uh, which I'm on way too much these days. <laughs> uh, you can find the Essentials team on there, and, and we're always putting out good stuff. Great, man. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. Paul, awesome. Okay, fun. so yes. I'm Brent Leary. Awesome. I'm Paul Greenberg. He's Paul Pedrazzi. There you oh, go. Then I'm Paul Pedrazzi. <laughs> no, he's Paul Pedrazzi. <laughs> I'm, I'm Paul Pedrazzi. <laughs> I'm confused. Anyway. <laughs> At the same time, and we are out. <laughs> See, so, yeah, we're going to go back to the lake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys.